Hey, hey everybody, it's me Rodney, and that's Missy over there. She's pet petting Cammy. I try to make her lay down because I know she's gonna stay over here with me. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> so hopefully everybody's having a good day. I think today we're gonna be doing something a little bit different than what we've been doing, but it kind of the same. Mm -hmm. So, um, kind of taking a break from Christmas. And I have a lot of furniture uh, stacked up that needs to be painted up. So that's what I'm bringing y'all today is this little end table. But we're still going to be decoupaging it. So that's fun. <laughs> All right. That's enough of that. She's going to, she's going to, she'll stay right here or she might leave. Yeah, she'll probably come over here where I'm at. I just, she's just going to try to sit on top of my blanket, or the drop cloth or whatever. That's fine. Yeah. Okay, so focus, right? Okay, so here's the table that I have, and it is um, wood. And all I did was go sand it up with 220 grit all the way around. And then this piece right here actually goes on the inside right here. Um, so we took the screws out, and but I'm going to decoupage this piece and this piece. And uh, I won't put this on today uh, because I'm going to need everything to dry up really good before I try to uh, put that back in there because it kind of fits, but you got to pull the legs a little bit, put it in there, and then Rodney will have to flip it over and put the screws in. But you'll see, you'll see pretty much how it's going to turn out. So we're going to paint the top part of this table. Um, in drop cloth and I'm going to paint this part in drop cloth and then we're going to paint the rest a pretty green color is called a weeping willow it's one of their new greens it's like a cottage green wouldn't you say like a cottage yeah color. I think it's a cool color yeah, it's a really especially pretty, when it's dry and it's going to look really good I think with this decoupage paper that we have so we're using Dixie Bell's uh, paper today it's really pretty and I've worked with Dixie Bell's paper before so I like it's big. It'll be this one sheet will be able to cover the top of this and that no problem. Um, so let's just get it going. So the first thing I'm going to do, I've already sanded it and wiped it down and got it really nice and clean. So it's ready to go. I'm going to go ahead and paint the top parts of these white. So that way it can be drying and that way I can do the decoupage before the video is over. So drop cloth which I don't have much of it left, so I'm hoping it's going to cover. And drop cloth is a tannish white color. Ooh, it's, yeah. It's like in between tan and white. Yeah. It'll go really good with this decoupage paper. Um, it, it'll keep it, it's not dark, so it'll keep it bright. But it will um, let, it'll give it that white background so that the image can show through. Yeah, it'll look pretty good. Mm -hmm. And it kind of ma it matches up. It kind of matches the paper itself. The right, paper the, has a tannish color, so we had to pick a color that would kind of fit with that. Right. But bright enough that the decoupage, the green will will be enhanced. That's in the paper. Right. Because their papers, they'll print, uh, they use a, it's one It's one of those big printers, they're like $40,000. But, uh, they so they can print bigger sheets, but they also print white onto their sheets. So that that's in itself is kind of a little advantage if you, if you have a, if you can print white onto your decoupage, then you can don't have right. you can be a little more forgiving with the styles with the paints that you can use. So you could technically paint, you know, black up under it or something like that, and it would just darken the entire image everywhere. Margie said, if I tried that, I'd have paint everywhere. No, it's easy. Probably the way you're dipping it from the floor. Oh yeah. And she's using a new paintbrush. So this time. the yeah, we got zebra brushes, um, and this is the Palm Pro. It's angled and it has a short handle, so it's really easy on the wrist. Um, and I put a link to the description because we we are an official zebra dealer, right? And uh, 
their brushes, that brush right there in particular is $10.95. It's quality. We've been testing Zebra for a, a while. Yeah. Actually, we've been using Zebra for a long time. Yeah. But we just. Uh, yeah, it's a good brush for that price. $10.95 and get a quality brush that'll last you a long time. Right. You, you can't beat that. So on this table and this bottom piece right here, I'm only wanting to do the top because I'm going to paint hey, Tam. the sides of it um, with the green color. So even if there's white on it, it's okay because the green will cover it. But I just want to get these pieces going so I can get them dry so that I can... Now remember, you're obscuring. They can't see that one because it's being obscured it's on by the, the table. Floor though, I, don't I know. Mean, it's all good. Tam said, "Hello, friends." Hello. So the chalk paint is self-leveling. You just want to um, make sure that you have it as smooth as possible, and the zebra brushes really do um, allow you to get that smooth. And not so much worried about um, quite full coverage here. You just want it to be. And don't forget, guys, if you get a new paintbrush, make sure you take a uh, Phillips head screwdriver or a, a round screwdriver and kind of beat the, beat the brush over the screwdriver to knock out any loose bristles beforehand because there's always going to be loose bristles in a brand new brush. I'm just going to use the same brush. I'm just going to wash it real quick. Okay. She's going to wash her brush real quick, and then we're going to move on to the green. Hopefully, everybody's weekend is starting off pretty good today. I know ours is going to be, we're going to be having, we have to go to Lowe's after, uh, after we get done with this. We got to pick the kids up from school early so we can take them to do some stuff. The store's having to close early today because of the Christmas parade downtown. So we like to get out of the way so that people can enjoy the festivities. So that's what all we got going on today. Yeah. Okay. So just clean my brush. And it doesn't take a lot to clean them. Mm -hmm. Also, guys, I know I don't have it on the website, the scrubby soap, but I, I just got a whole box of that stuff in. It's like 128 mm -hmm. bars. So and scrubby soap is it's amazing. really good for cleaning your paint brushes. It's now, amazing. Missy uses it to wash her hands and everything. I use it just to clean paint brushes. I use it for a bunch of stuff. Hey, Becky, how are you doing today? Uh, Kathy says they're finally getting some snow in Montana. Wow. The kids would love it if we got snow here. I don't know. Montana is MT, right? Not Minnesota. Minnesota's. Oh boy, I hope so. Yeah. She, this she group, said pet that puppy. <laughs> she's, she's laying literally right over here. They, get, they can see her. Yeah, can she you is, see her? Yeah. She's, um, she doesn't stay far. <laughs> okay, so just start painting it. Just start painting it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so I, yeah, I like this color a lot. Um, this part right here, I do want to paint green that goes all the way around. But what I want to do is I want to put my decoupage paper on it first and then I want to sand off the decoupage paper and then I'm going to use just a little paintbrush and then just go around the edges to, um, touch it up. So I'm not so much worried about getting that part painted green right now. Um, I, I want to get my decoupage paper on there first. But I do want to get all this painted. This green is gorgeous. I have a feeling I'll be painting more stuff with this color. I haven't she used liked, this green. She likes painting stuff green. Yeah. Like uh, Tuesday, we got a video coming out about a we're re, we refinishing an old dresser. It's probably early 1900s. I'd say between 19 and 1930 is when it was made. And we're redoing that, but we're going to paint. It's got uh, enough damage. It's got enough damage it needs to that, be painted. That, I have to, that we have to paint it. So we can't, like, unless I wanted to peel veneer off and replace veneer, it's, and if you've ever bought veneer, 
like real wood veneer, it is not cheap. Mm -mm. Especially when you're trying to match something like mahogany or walnut. And I think that was walnut. But we're going to be painting it. And she'll probably paint it some green color too. Probably so. Because one, green's kind of popular right now. I don't know why. I guess because everybody's waiting for springtime to get here. But I don't know. I would like... Uh, Christmas to last a little longer. So Missy's kind of burnt out on the Christmas stuff because she said the other day at the store, she said, I'm thinking about just taking this tree down. And I was like, oh no, gosh. you can't do no, that. The, yeah, let me explain why I'm ready to take the trees down at the store. The one tree, when you go in the store and go to the left down the ramp, that whole tree, it's nine foot tall and half the lights went out on it. So I had to just unplug it because otherwise I got to take off the decorations then find the lights, take them off, replace them, and put everything back on. And I'm just like, no. Now, last night, when I was at the store, and during the day, you don't really notice it, but at night, you do, of course. Um, when we turned off the, all the lights to the store, uh, sure enough, half the lights on the tree at the showcases are all off. On the new tree? On the new tree. Holy cow. So I'm like, oh, I'm ready to take these trees down because... Otherwise, I'm gonna have to um, take all, redecorate them, and I just not. You can come all the way around. This table has a drawer. I forgot about that. Oh yeah, it does. It does have a drawer. And I went and I went through all of our ceramic knobs, oh, and I found this cute one right here that we're gonna put on it. It's green. It's a little bit darker than the colors we're using, but I think it'll tie in really well with the decoupage paper. I didn't have a lighter color. I like fun knobs though. Yeah, it's a fun it is a fun knob for sure. And the cool thing about these is the the uh screw is long enough that it'll go through everything, including like our thick uh doors leading to Emily's room. So yeah, behind Missy there in the main view, behind all that, that's that's where Emily's room is. <laughs> So she's got the cool folding doors. This green is really good coverage. And she's using an eight ounce paint. I'm thinking about doing a, uh, Margie says she loves the green. This green is gorgeous. Susie says she loves watching you work. Then she tells her friends what they need to do. <laughs> this green is gorgeous. So I'm thinking about doing a challenge video to see if I can paint a dresser with an eight ounce paint. And I think I can, because I painted a piano bench not too long ago, and I used a four ounce paint, and I was able to put like three or four coats on that thing because I kept getting a bleed through because I'm too lazy to prime. But the piece that we got out there, we shouldn't have to prime. Originally I thought we would. I th no, the dresser. Yeah. I think we're gonna have to prime. You do it. think we're I, gonna prime? I would prefer to prime it before um, I put any paint on it. Just. Um, but I say what we because see, it's an old piece. I want to see if we can get an eight ounce paint to. Just the color, not yeah, the. Yeah, just to yeah. see if we can coat an entire dresser with one ounce paint. I think we can, as opposed to some other brand paints. I think we can with the Dixie Bell. I really do. Yeah. Becky said it is a soothing green. It's very pretty. It's very nice. Yeah, you can really see it real well now that you've gotten to the front. And it's covering so good. You know, some colors, sometimes the fun colors don't cover as nice. You got smart this week and I'm eating lunch while I watch you work. <laughs> yeah, that's the one thing we did not do. We didn't eat anything. So we'll be eating something after we leave here. Well, you know if we go get those yeah, we kids. Go get, you know, here's the deal. If we go get the kids, which we have to do because Gavin needs some new clothes and stuff. Because um, he doesn't tell you when he needs new clothes. You just kind of have to find out. He just walked. He, uh, he'll, he outgrew some of his jeans. <laughs> and I've been washing the same jeans over and over. And I'm like, holy cow, kid. And it's because he outgrew his other ones and he just didn't say anything. So he's just been wearing the same ones. Yeah, and then his, his 
the you know your waist. He plays football, so he's working out, so he's constantly getting b- bigger and bigger. I swear he's went through a growth spurt. Too. And uh, his the, his jeans were literally cutting into him, and I was like, "What's wrong, buddy?" And he's like, "My jeans are too tight." And I, I, I said, "Good Lord, son, why didn't you come and tell me?" He started crying. And I was like, what are you crying for? He's like, I just didn't know. I was like, when you need some new clothes, when your jeans are too tight, you need to let somebody know because we're not in there checking. We're not putting your clothes on for you anymore like when you was little. So that was a long time ago when that happened. But, uh, yeah, he's a, he's a hoot. But anyways, whenever we go get them, we have to take them to Chick-fil-A They're every want, single time. They're going to want Chick-fil-A. That's all sure. they want to eat, Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A. That's why I like taking them places on Sunday because... I tell them all that, like, my thing all the time is like, oh, they closed. Kelly's day, let's go to Starbucks. I'm like, oh, they closed. <laughs> yeah, Starbucks and Chick-fil-A. Starbucks, they closed. They shut down. That green is English ivy, right? No, no it's weeping uh, willow. Weeping willow. Sorry about that. English Lorna, ivy. it's weeping willow. It's so pretty. English ivy is a little bit darker, isn't it? Um, it's more vibrant. It's like louder. I guess you would say. Jennifer said her son's the same way. She'll notice holes in his shoes. And why didn't he tell me? It's just shrugs. Anything? Now, Kaylee, when her for clothes. Oh, Ka- the Kaylee. She she, she there's not an opportunity here. for that. Kaylee's a girl. Yeah. She just loads a cart down and then brings it to me. For it me says, to, I, I want this. For me to enter my cart information. <laughs> <laughs> I need these clothes. Luckily, though, Kaylee's a, uh, she wears a small jean, so we're able to just uh, pawn all of our small CeeLo jeans off on her because, you know, not that we don't sell that many smalls. Because they're really small. They're not normal small. But yeah, that's about what Gavin does now. He don't ask for much. The only thing he asked me for for Christmas was a computer monitor. And a chair. And a computer chair. He just wants a chair and a monitor. I'm like, okay. That's easy. Easy. He's an easy kid. Hey, Joan. She's jumping on from Kenosha, Wisconsin. Hey, hey. Jamie, we will we'll, we will be finished. We'll be uh, clear coating the table with uh, flat clear. I'll use, yeah, I'll clear coat. I won't be able to clear coat it in the live because I need the paint to dry right. all the way through. But um, when it's all said and done, I'll seal the whole entire table up, the decoupage, the base, and this piece right here. I'll seal the whole table up. I'm just going to use clear coat and flat. I'll put two coats of the clear coat on the top because it is a table, and then I can just do one coat on the base. But in the end, that's how I'll seal it up. Um, Seal up the chalk paint and seal up the decoupage paper on this piece and that piece um, is with the clear coat. But not. it won't happen in the live... um, because you want your paint to dry all the way through. So chalk paint dries really fast, um, but you want it to dry all the way through, um, especially on a furniture piece like this, because you want it to last. And you need that top to be hard. Yeah, you need it to be hard. So preferably if I do, like the way I would prefer to do it is like after I get done with this today, I just push it to the side, and then, like, tomorrow I can come through and seal the whole entire thing. That just gives everything time to fully cure up and dry. Um, and then I would like to give the, the top coat, you just, like, an hour in between each one. And then, um, and then about after 24 hours after that, it's just good for regular use. Yeah. Um, you, you know, because top paint, I mean, they say, like, what 28 days 28 days, 28 days for, for a everything. full cure that's for, for cure, the paint cure. to reach its hardest yeah so and but light use as long as it's just light use um you you'll be fine so it, like if you're doing your table at home and 
you paint it and then you seal it up the next day. You could you can put it back on the floor or you know out to use, but I would just light use. I wouldn't. I would give it a couple of weeks before you did anything heavy because you want your paint to dry all the way. So after I get everything coated, the first thing I like to do is just go around and make sure that I don't have any runs or drips anywhere so I can try to catch it before it starts drying. Make sure there's no runs, especially in areas like um, like here it has these little dents where this side piece goes in. So you just want to make sure that no paint is globbed up there because I do want to put that piece back in when it's all said and done. And I don't know, can you see hardly any paint? Yeah. So hold it kind of towards the that view. You still can't see it. You gotta, it, you, gotta you gotta get in front of the table like because that. yeah. So you have to hold it like this in front of the table. Yeah. See, so we've used hardly any hardly any paint on that first coat. Uh -uh. And it's got it's full coverage. I'm trying to pop the chat back out. For some reason, it closed out on me. There we go. Just making sure that I got. I posted a link to all the top coats that we have currently available for sale online. Flat is flat. Like you won't be able to see it once it's dry. Satin is satin. Then there's gloss and you could seal it up with gator hide if you wanted it to be waterproof. Yeah, like if you were gonna, if it had a chance, if it was like, if you're really you're worried about, real worried about somebody spilling water on yeah. it or something, Gator Hide would be the way to go. Gator Hide, yeah. Gator Hide's got a dull finish. It's like, a, like it's like a dull satin. For um, like drinks or anything like that. I mean, yeah, it should be fine. So it should be fine. Like clear coating it with satin would be fine too. I think I want this drawer to pop out. And they make a gloss. If you like gloss, they make a right. gloss. I'm just gonna touch up around my drawer. It's like I uh, polyurethane the top of our kitchen table and I sanded it and polished it so much that it became a semi-gloss and I painted it with satin because we wanted it to have a dull finish. So it would really enhance the look of the wood grain. So I overworked that, so there it was. Sandy said she wished she lived nearby. She really loves our store. Oh, uh, thank you. But yeah, that's one of the advantages of Dixie Belle paint is the sheer. All right, I'm uh, gonna watch this. How thick it is. That's why, if you notice, I don't know if you said anything about it a while ago, but she mists it with a, a mister. I, okay, yeah, I did use a mister bottle for the top of the table. Um, and then that kind of wets the paint and then and loosens then it up. With so, the green, my paintbrush was already wet from where I washed it. Right. So I didn't really have to. I didn't really have to do that. But yeah, we we used to uh, clear coat. Every, we used to clean our brushes with Dawn soap, but scrubby soap is so effective. I mean, it it gets the pigment out. You know how sometimes your brushes will get stained over time because the pigment. Some colors will. And then you're going to get it with those bristles, especially on the zebra, because they're pure white, mm -hmm. you're going to get staining. But that doesn't affect the paint job that you get with it. That's just the bristles are just stained. Right. So that's the first time we've carried a brush on our website so far. I have to add a bunch more, but I didn't. I kind of ran out of time because I didn't realize I didn't already have them on there. So I had to throw that one on there real quick. I do want to do the um, 
She loves to watch when Margie loves to watch when May May and Brenda do video visits. Oh, she loves yes. her store too. Yeah. If only our internet was better. Goodness gracious. Yeah, if our internet was better, we would go live from the store all the time. But yeah, I could. We're at the mercy of AT and T. Yeah, yeah. There. Six megabyte per second in the downtown core. So I am going to go over this one more time just so that way I can have it um, bright everywhere. A little bit brighter, yeah. I'd like it to be a little bit brighter. So if you've noticed, by the time Missy finished painting the green, the white's already dry. Yeah, there's just a... And that's the advantage of that. This is why you shouldn't paint out of your container. Yeah. Your trash. So... There's trash in the container, and that's why you shouldn't uh, so you should paint directly paint, from the container. Paint from the container. But it happens. We're, I'm especially guilty of it. I'm guilty of it all the time. But my advice would be don't paint out of the container. To pour the paint into like a paper plate or something like that to keep trash from. Which we got us some batter bottles. We're going to start pouring our paint in the batter bottles. Yeah. Sandy said, that's going to be lovely. I think it is. And I especially, I think y'all are going to like this decoupage paper, too. I think it's going to look good together. I just want it to be a little bit. Yeah, we have one in stock at the store, and I ordered 10 from Dixie Bell this morning. Because I like to make sure I have enough of everything, just in case anybody buys any. It's like, I want to make sure that I have it, because it's a little bit cheaper for me to ship it to you from our store than it is for me to ship it to you from them. Yeah, that's that's looking really good. You can see that pretty clearly on the video. The, yeah, drop cloth. What's funny is the difference in the views because overhead I adjusted the white balance to match the way it is from this view and I adjusted the white balance to match it from the front so it depends on how much lights hitting the surface or how bright something is let's see if I can change that exposure a little bit the difference nope, between drop cloth and buttercream is buttercream has a more yellow tone to it, where this one has more like, a, I guess, a brown tone to it. There we go. I think I got that just right. But they're, they're good underlay. I mean, it's just enough. It's still white, mm -hmm. but it's just enough that it's not cotton or fluff. Yeah, it's not your pure white. It's a softer white, but it doesn't have a yellow undertone to it like uh, buttercream does. Like if, um, But drop cloth works really good with most colors. Like it, it's a good matchup. Like if you're doing two-tone or whatever, um, it's a lot softer. And it, it goes well with most home decor as far as like if you're just trying to be neutral. I find it's easier for me to blend colors together when I use drop cloth as opposed to cotton. Because like when I did that book, when I did that ombre effect on that book, it was harder for me to blend the cotton into the blue than it was than it would have been for drop cloth. And I guess because drop cloth so in between. Mm -hmm. it's, because yeah. I used drop cloth and chocolate to do that suitcase and I got a really good effect that rolled out yeah it's a good color it's kind of i kind of lean towards it when i'm doing stuff like this um or if i'm just gonna if i'm trying to paint a piece like a neutral color i lean to it cammy is in the background just laying there taking a nap yeah so funny at least she's using her manner. But yeah, we have a, a bunch of furniture that we're having to, to clean out and get ready and get it. Because the new year's almost here, and we have to be thinking about that. So that's why we're going with these lighter greens and 
you'll see in the upcoming content that most of this stuff is going to be geared for the new year. She is a Corgi, Pembroke Welsh. Yeah. She was the runt. Runt of the litter. She's, um, she's five years old. Twenty. Yeah, she's 18. five. Yeah, she's five. She's, she's five, five years old. She's she a good pup. She's a monster. She barks a lot. <laughs> if you want a dog that barks, this one's the one to get. That's the one to get. A boss. She, she's a herding dog, so she'll herd the kids. And like, she herds us all. Like, she wants everybody in the same room all the time, so it, it stresses her out. She Watch has anxiety. Pup. She doesn't do well with car rides. Or um, lightning. She doesn't like lightning. No, she loud noises, anything like that. Um, she is a boss. Even though she's not the oldest dog in the house, she is the boss of all the dogs. And she lets everybody know. Now she's laying behind me. I need these top. My favorite thing is you can take your hand and do this, but at, towards the ground your fingers and she'll come up and touch her nose to it yeah and then you give her a treat or something yeah but she, that's the one guaranteed way and she likes to play hide and go seek so like um i can like rodney can talk to her in in the living room and she'll pay she'll pay attention to rodney and then i can like run into the bedroom and hide and then call her and then you can watch her like sneak into the bedroom and she'll look in three different spaces because I only hide in three spaces. But she'll look and she'll sneak like a cat like into each space. And then I'll just like jump out and scare her. And then she'll take off running and she jumps. It's funny. It, playing hide and go seek with Cammie is fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. So, Tina, Tina, I'm still thinking about, I'm still working about on how I'm going to go about doing that. I got a di different screen recorder, but it'll only record at 1080p. So I'm probably going to end up using Streamlabs as my stream recorder, and so because my monitor is a 4K that I use, because I have a I have a two monitor setup, so I'm trying to work that into a single workflow because that will be easier to see. Because I'm always switching between softwares, so I have to figure out how I'm going to do that. Do, can I take the heat gun to the top? And finish it off real quick. Yeah, go ahead. The heat gun's not that low. So she's going to take a heat gun to the top, in case you guys didn't catch that. I'm sure you did. And get this top dried up faster. Did you already repaint the green? No, but I can't yet. Oh, because you want to wait till you get the, the decoupage on. I got you. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't go around the sides. But I can't, um, can't, I can't paint it. the bottom of it yet until... Uh, Come here, pup. She'll probably she bark. bark. If she barks, I'll meet her. All right, that's enough. Don't do it no more. Come here. Sorry about that, guys. I, I thought she would. I should have muted it beforehand. Yeah, you're a good pup. So now I'm having to pet her to keep her distracted. She, she hates the vacuum cleaner. And so she thinks that the heat gun is the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> yeah, she's protecting us. You're such a good dog. <laughs> she's protecting us, but it was, it was loud. Her barks are deafening. She probably clipped out the mic, too. Why don't you just move the table towards you? And that won't pull the plugs out. All right, good pup. All right, she's calmed down, so that's that. But yeah, I'm still trying to work out how I'm gonna make, how I'm gonna record that, because the software is switching. Because I, Streamlabs will record one, when, one program at a time, basically, or one screen at a time. 
It could be something I could chop up into pieces, I guess. Or I could run two recording softwares at the same time. Or maybe just turn one monitor off. That might be easier. I don't know. We'll get it figured out. Or I'll get it figured out. Because sometimes I have this tendency to overcomplicate things. And uh, that can get in the way of stuff big time. It doesn't take long for this to dry with a heat gun or without a heat gun. Without a heat gun, it takes like five minutes. With a heat gun, it shouldn't take more than two, depending on how close you get the heat gun to the surface. Now, the heat gun we use is a cheap Amazon special Genesis. If I could do it over again, I'd probably buy a Wagner because Wagner's a better product. And I think Wagner's are made in the U.S. I think. Honestly, I, if you're painting at home, I wouldn't use a heat gun. Like, if I wasn't doing this on the live, I wouldn't have used a heat gun. I would just let it um, dry on its own um, to get a better um, it, so it can continue self leveling and yeah. and that kind of stuff. So, like, I for crafting, heat gun is fine. Um, but for painting furniture like this, preferably if my best advice is it don't heat gun it, just let it dry on its own. Um, so that way it, it can self level. Because now she's having to go through and sand any spots that aren't self level. Yeah. Um, it's not. It's not bad. I mean, but yeah, if you can. Also, a lot lately, guys, I've been noticing that uh, there's several videos out there doing this stuff, and they'll go from 80 grit sandpaper to 400 grit sandpaper. That's not how the that's not how that should work. If you start at 80, you need to go to 120, 240, 320, 480. I touched green paint. It'll be fine. You're decoupaging over it. Just make sure the green goes over it. Well, that. There you go. Yeah. There Gone. You go. That's another thing. You can wet distress this. Yeah. It's easier to wet distress. Um. Yes. Be patient. When it comes to sanding, be patient. If you want the best results, you're going to yeah. work through the progressions because you need to get rid of the, the different scratches each go around. So when we get something like this, we're going to do 320 or 480. Uh, Sandy, a long time ago, I used to help a guy who owned a body shop, and he would restore really old cars. So that's how I learned about the sandpaper progressions. So it's a pretty big sheet of paper. Yeah, it's huge. I can't remember the size. It's um, 23 by 59. Yeah. And it, it's rice paper, too, because you can see the, like, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, if you'll be able to see it on the camera, but it's just like the rice paper, like what we have. Uh, um, yeah. It's just bigger sheets. So I think that's going to, and don't worry about the crease that's in the paper. That's going to work its way out um, when you decoupage it on there. Did you take a class to learn how to do this? This? No. No. Just a um, lot so, of experimentation. Okay. Uh, I showed you that Facebook memory. Yeah. Um, I've been doing this stuff since, what was it, 10 years ago? Yeah, it was 10 years it ago. It was 10 years ago. We had, um, me and my mama had a, a little craft show that we went and set up to. So we had, It you was know, at Jeff State. Yeah. When Jeff um, State first opened. We, and we had, and I had on my Facebook show me memories of it from 10 years ago where we were set up and we had painted furniture and signs and just all kinds of stuff like that. It was just... They had um, a little silhouette cutter that they would cut uh, yeah. stencils out on. It was just a learning process. It was just learn as you go. Because the thing about paint, painting chalk paint 
and stuff is it's all removable. So if you don't like it, you can sand it back down. Um, that's why painting furniture doesn't really hurt my feelings because if you don't like it or if you want to change it, all you got to do is sand it down. If you're going to refinish it, you're going to have to sand it down anyways to, yeah. you know, get all the old off of it. It's like that old dresser out there. Um, if it was in perfect condition, then yeah, maybe you could just clean it up and, um, you know, re stain it to so, its yeah. natural beauty. But it would be like that. Um, that uh, Jacobian cabinet where it's been restored. Yeah, um, but like this table is um, it's real wood, but it's not anything old or anything like that. So to me, it doesn't hurt my feelings. And then if a year from now I don't like it, all I got to do is sand all of this off and yep. then start over. <laughs> but it's not a big deal to me. But that's just me. I know not everybody feels that way. Yeah. And should... that's okay. Because we were... if you don't like it, you don't have to do it. We were we were watching some some comments I, I watched, on somebody else's page. Yeah, the other this day. other girl that I watched that paints furniture, and I was watching it, and I was like, "Man, some people are so mean." <laughs> you don't have to watch it. You don't have to like it. Somebody will. I don't like everything yeah, that everybody was, it, does. There were some brutal comments, so I was yeah. like, "Holy cow! I can't believe people say that." I feel sad for, but anyways, okay. So this is where it's gonna go. And I think I am going to go ahead and just cut this in half um, so that way I can uh, take the other half and then do the top of that. So I need about, because I want to make sure that I got enough for this in, enough for that in. So I'm just going to cut this section right here. I'm going to take you up so under the overhead only view so they can see how to do this a little bit better. I'm going to cut this real quick. So figuring out how to space our cameras for this one was a little bit more difficult. So this piece will go on this tabletop. Yeah, I think that green matches up really well. And this piece will go on this. And there still will be some left. So you can um, save it for like little odd and end pieces. Projects. Yeah, so I'm going to go this way. So I want to make sure that mine, when I do that bottom piece, it's going to go that way too. Okay, so this is good. What I'm gonna do. May May sent me to you. I thought she said you were making ginger. Oh, I did that last Friday. We did that on, yeah. We did. Yeah. We made gingerbread houses out of wood last, last Friday. Friday on our live. That's our last live show. Which that was really fun too. Yeah. All right, so I'm just going to pour Mod Podge down. And the reason why I use Mod Podge over um, clear coat is because uh, clear coat dries faster, so you have to work faster. And I want this to be, like, really secured on, and Mod Podge is like a glue. You um, People use the clear coat all the time to um, decoupage, and you can, but preferably my method is to... Mod Podge. So what I'm going to do is get the trash out, number one. Um, but I'm just going to put on a good layer of the Mod Podge and get it all nice and spread out. I wish I would have had my bigger brush, but it's okay. Oh, yeah. I didn't even think about that when you said that. Yeah. Go to content. Wow. So, yeah. Okay, I need to get the link for this video. And then um, it's just easier to me, and I feel like it's a tighter, uh, tighter glue than clear coat because the clear coat would be dried right now. So this actually gives you more of a working time to make sure that you got it nice and spread out.
Susan, I just posted the link for the uh, that video that we had just done. Oh, with the gingerbread the houses? Gingerbread houses. Okay. So I'm going to get it laid down. You want to look at your end and make sure. And I'm just going to smooth it. Don't overwork it because you don't want to tear your paper. And then what I'm going to do is lift it up and pour some more. And then spread it out. Let's see if I can change the camera set and make this look a little bit better. Because there's too much sunbeam is coming in. There we go. Because even though it's darkening the image up, you can see the Mod Podge going down. And then I'll bring the brightness up a little bit. There we go. If it weren't for that sun beaming in through the thing, that wouldn't have happened. Sorry about it not being clear there for a second, guys. I'm just making sure that I get all my edges. That's the most important thing, too, to make sure you get it on there smooth, even, and get it on all your edges. That way, when you go to laying it down like she was doing a while ago, you can get it as smooth as you possibly can. Yeah. Because you can work all your wrinkles out. And that's where, like she was saying, where the, the clear coat dries too quick. Yeah, it can dry too quick. I'm just trying to make sure I don't have any trash. Again, it's so much better if you don't work out of the job. One day I'll do the same thing. And there. Then, I was talking. I was talking, but they, they couldn't see me. So. And then just the, lay it. And then, yeah. If you have some wax paper and a brayer. Yeah, you can bray it. Just. Or shall we use a, a plastic bag? I'm just gonna use a plastic bag. And I'm just going to kind of smooth it out. And make sure that it's all. And the reason why is because you got the, the Mod Podge underneath, you know, so it's going through the paper because it is rice paper, so it is thin. So the the bag keeps it from sticking and it keeps it from being on your hands so that you don't accidentally rub too hard on the paper which i've done that before rub a hole in my paper on accident because my hands got stick mm -hmm. too sticky you can you can overwork it Tina said, would you prefer to do the ironing method on this? You could have done the iron method on this. She would have preferred to do the iron it's method. It's bigger. It's big enough to do it for sure. Um, you just do the Mod Podge, let it dry, and then iron it on. Which that would have been ideal for this. Yeah. We, we... Actually, I didn't even think about it. <laughs> Until she said that. I didn't even think about doing the iron-on method, but that actually would have been... We're out of outlets anyways for yeah. the area. Unless we ran a big extension cord from where you plugged that up. Yeah. Because you have to use a big extension cord if you're going to run an iron on an extension cord. Make sure you're right. using the appropriate size of wires. So, we're just going to let that dry. And make sure there's no air bubbles as if I don't see none. And then, so I'm just gonna move this over and then put this piece right here. So that way you can see this piece. So my paper, cause my drawer is up front. So as long as my paper is going this way, yeah, we're good. 
And like I said, this one, um, so this one has more distress, so I actually might go this side because it's just a smaller piece. Give myself some room on each end. And I am gonna go ahead and cut this one so that way I can reuse that paper for something else. Save this piece for a different project. It is pretty. I think that's either it's either fifteen ninety five or fourteen ninety five. I think it's fourteen ninety five. So because the Santa I think was fifteen ninety five. Yeah. Same thing here, but on this one, um, because it's so small, we're just going to go ahead and um, modge podge the whole entire thing and just lay the board down, lay the paper down on top of it because it's small. And she's actually got her knees on a uh, shock mat, <laughs> yeah, which is made for you so you don't. Hurt, so your knees don't hurt sitting on the tile. I use it a lot. I use them a lot. They actually for like working out or something in a gym, but I use them outside whenever I'm doing uh, changing oil in the car or whatever. You could do a nice box with extra paper and to match the table. Yeah, you could. You could um, yeah. easily use that piece right there um, that I tore off and do an um, something Ooh. small, a frame or just something and it would uh tie in together in the room you know um the small box i did is pre actually pretty good we have some mm -hmm. small boxes actually i do yeah you can just tie it in that would look really nice yeah it would then you can sell it as a combo kit or something table with a box so okay how many people has painted furniture before that's a great question. Yeah, that's, I'm curious about that. I'm just trying to make sure that I don't have no trash in this. Yeah, how many people have painted furniture? How many people? Before? And if not, yeah. Sandy said, badly. <laughs> badly. I've only stained, Susie said. Yeah. How many people would be interested in painting furniture? That's Mar so easy. <laughs> Margie said, I have a little bit. Well, it wasn't very good at it. Tina says she likes to stain all hers. Right. I knew Tina did that. Yeah. Um, you know, I, from what I've learned is it, it's just uh, experience. The more you do it. Because, like, I did go through a lull where I didn't paint furniture for, what, two years? More. If not more. Yeah. And, um. And I felt like I was having to reteach myself how to do all this stuff um, because I went so long in between paint and furniture. So, but um, Dixie Bell is a, the chalk paint is an amazing paint if you're just starting out and you're learning or you're just wanting to, you know, update some of the furniture that you have in your house or whatever. Um, it's really forgiving and it's really workable. I, I, the biggest thing is a good chalk paint and a good brush and starting out with a clean piece of furniture and you really can't go wrong. It's, um, it's not impossible. Now I, there's some furniture, I've seen people paint furniture that I, I can't, I don't have that skill level. I, I don't know how to do all that, but, um, yeah, like there's some pieces that I'll do that she won't yeah, do. Yeah, I'm not good at blending um, or doing that ombre look and stuff like that. That's, I, I just practice though. That's what it takes is practice. But um, if you have furniture in your house that you're just looking to update without going out and buying furniture, do not be scared. Just go grab um, a good, grab a good paintbrush and grab some Dixie Bell and I'm, you really... Um, you don't have to have all the fancy tools um, or yeah, anything like that. Yeah, you just need like a paintbrush, paint a, a sheet sandpaper, of sand, a sheet of sandpaper, and, some and a wet rag. Yeah, and it's, you know. If you want to be real meticulous, you can get you a, uh, what is it, a tack cloth to wipe it with. But yeah. that's some, um, a lot of times that's I, overkill unless you're applying a clear coat. 
I use like a, microfiber a cloths all the time. That's what I use to wipe it down, wash it, wipe it down, everything. Um, if it, like on the, when we started with this table, all I did was scuff sand it to make sure that the clear coat um, that gave it, it gave something for the paint to grab onto. If it's, um, but if it's wood, man, it's paintable. And even if it's not wood, it's still paintable because there's yep. products that um, will allow you to paint laminate furniture with that shiny brown plastic, whatever. Yeah. There's a uh, slick stick will let you paint. I have, I actually have a couple of pieces that I'm going to have to slick stick in order to chalk paint. Um, but it's all, it's all doable. So if you, if don't be scared, just do it. Just paint it. Susan, they say that after you let Dixie Bell cure that you can use it outdoors. I personally wouldn't use it outdoors unless I put a uh, gator hide on it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people say, well, you can use polycrylic. Polycrylic will not stand up to UV. It's just not possible. I know because I painted this. I, I did this uh, cedar swing, and I decided polycrylic was the way for me to go on that cedar swing. A year later, that cedar swing is brown instead yep. of red, and the polycrylic is chipped off and laying places. Mm -hmm. I should have used spar varnish for that. At the time, I didn't even know about uh, gator hide because Dixie Bell wasn't around yet when I did that. The and uh, the Lorna is correct. The products have improved immensely over the years. Yeah, they have. I mean, I mean, I started painting chalk paint when it was when you had to make your own chalk paint. That, That's what I started and then out on for a long time. You could that lady, the Annie Sloan chalk Annie paint. Annie Sloan was yeah. the only option. Um, uh, and I tried dog. a bunch of different uh, chalk paints and paints in general and stuff like that. But uh, DC Bell is by far one of my favorite companies as far as it goes. As um, the Same. coverage is good, the paint is yep. good, um, the colors I like it. Um, and then the other line is which I'm I'm going to show y'all how to use silk paint too. Um, it's Dixie it's, Bell. It's product. a Dixie Bell product. It's an all-in-one issue. Primer, your paint, your top coat, all built into one. I've painted a lot of furniture with the silk paint. If you're not trying to distress and you're just wanting that modern look and that full coverage, silk is the way to go. Um, it's self-leveling. It's really easy. Again, a good surface and a good paintbrush, and you can do it. Um, and then once it's dried and hard, in 30 days, it is hard. It well, is yeah, cured. I painted a piece, and I had a run on the top. And I was sanding it with 80 grit sandpaper for over 15 minutes. It took a lot of elbow grease. And I was like, whoa, it's this is the real easy. deal. Yeah. It was almost as hard as an enamel. Yeah. Because when it dries, it dries. It's an amazing paint, and I like it a lot. And I do like to go with that paint. Um, they have different colors in the silk line versus the Dixie Belle line. Um, but it's, it's a good paint. So while the top of this uh, keeps on uh, drying up because I don't want to overwork, you don't want to overwork is the Mod Podge or the decoupage paper or anything like that. You just want to let it dry some more. This one too. Um, my base is dry and I thought I had some 400 grit sandpaper, but I don't, but I have an old rad pad. So I'm just going to have to use it. So the rad pad's like 2000 grit sandpaper. Yeah, so it's just, but okay, it so, works really well for making smooth. It results. does. So you, chalk paint has a little bit of a texture to it. You know, it's, it has that chalky feel or whatever. And um, I I like for mine to feel a buttery smooth. Um, so what I'm going to do is use this rad pad, is which it's a fine. Can you scoot the table towards you, some? Yeah. Um. Sandy, most woodworkers do frown on painting wood because most woodworkers are using high dollar wood like walnut, paduke, uh, hormiga, this is probably ebony. Just pine, isn't it? Soft that's pine. That's going to be a white wood or, uh, if if anything, is oak. It, is this good? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So but that's why. That's why. Because when you work with expensive woods. You're not gonna, you're not gonna want to paint it. You're not gonna want to stain those expensive wood. Like when I make ink pens on the lathe, 
I I just finish it in a CA finish, a clear acrylic finish, because I, I wouldn't want to paint it either. Uh, when I did the cedar swing, it was in a it was in that clear because I didn't want to paint or stain. So a beautiful wood, you don't even want to stain it, like zebra wood, uh, red heart, purple heart, any of that stuff. You're never going to put stain on that. My thing is, if you're willing to stain it, you're willing to paint it because you're changing that wood's appearance anyways. But no, he's, he's not being contrary because beautiful woods, you don't... Like a tiger oak, like, I would never paint over tiger oak unless the tiger oak was just a veneer and the veneer was peeled all the way off. Like I said on that old one out there that we're doing, I would just do a total refinish on that. But the veneer is so bad on the sides that I have no choice but to we fill it in. I filled it in yesterday and we're going to paint it after we prime it, of course. I have two end tables that are only 10 years old. They need to be refinished. How would Dixie Bell stain work on the end tables? I think it's yeah. partially wood. As long as it's wood or a wooden veneer, the stain will work great as long as you get it back to the original wood. So sanding through stain. Uh, Sometimes old, it can be a job. Old, sanding through old school, old school stain is kind of difficult. And uh, you got to be real careful if it's a veneer because you can actually sand all the way through the veneer. So what I like to recommend is trying to match the stain that's originally there and then just giving it a fresh, a fresh stain if that's what you're wanting to do. And sometimes I, I like, I'll mix stains together to get the color that, that best matches what's currently there and then go over that. That's, that's, the, the actual, that's actually the best method. Dixie Bell has two new stains. I haven't got it in stock yet. But uh, once it gets here, I'll experiment with those two and yeah. show you all the colors on those because I only have color sticks for the new ones, which I meant to post the paint sticks that I have now with the stain colors on them on our website, and I haven't done that yet. So I will get that done. Yeah, yeah a light sanding. If you're not trying to cut all the way through the stain, then a light sanding will be just fine. Mm -hmm. As long as you get... If you're going to stain, you got to get all the way through the clear coat. Yeah. Or the stain's not going to grab onto the wood. Yep. Because it's it's stain gonna... needs to soak into the wood grain yeah. itself. So it if you just stain to. over the clear coat, you're just staining over essentially plastic. Because that's essentially what a clear coat is. Mm -hmm. Because it's in the name. Polycrylic. And that's what, that's what Dixie Bell clear coat is. It's a polyacrylic, which means it's a... Uh, a plastic paint job, essentially. I, I am going to go through and do a second coat. I am not going to distress this piece. I think I'm going to leave it. You're going to leave um, it beautiful like this, yeah. Um, but if you wanted to distress this piece, um, you could do a light second coat, and then after that dry, you could come through and distress it. And if it, if I was distressing it, I would stress it around the drawer. And the legs anywhere where there would be natural wear and tear. That's what I would do if I was going to distress it. But for this piece, um, I really like the green. So. Yeah, we tend to let the piece do the talking. I'm a firm believer. If you've watched me before, I've said it. I'm a firm believer that the furniture will tell you what it wants. <laughs> like we painted a piece not too long ago, black. And then you turned around and re repainted it because it just did not look right mm -hmm. when it was done. She painted it sea glass, I think. Sometimes. Which is something that is a paint that we hardly ever use, but she used the sea glass and, you know, people loved it. That table's gone. I think this one will be gone too as soon as we take it to the store. Sometimes you think you want to do something and you don't. Now, um, if this was an older piece of furniture, then yeah, I probably would distress it. Um, but this isn't old. Yeah, if it's old and beat up and got a couple nicks if and it, scrapes. Yeah, then yeah, I would distress it. But 
This one isn't. It's not old. It, it was in really good shape. The dresser outside, I you know, once I get it painted, it will tell me whether or not if I want to distress it or not. Sandy says, yep, I'd grab it. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be really pretty. I think so, too. I think so, too. Especially when you sand that off right there around the edges and then put that green trim around the... Yeah, once I get that, get it all tied in, I think it's going to be really pretty. And I that's the real importance of a good brush is how well the brush forms and stays together. So when you go trimming around, you're not accidentally painting on the top. I learned that from a buddy of mine. When you, he was really good at painting houses. When you're doing your second coat, it's really important to um, sand in between the two coats because it allows you to have um, a smoother finish. And then plus it gives you the opportunity to look and check and make sure that there's not any runs or anything like that because you're going to want to sand those down if there are during that time. Um, but you don't have to use, um, you just want to use a fine grit. You don't want to use uh, a high grit. So anything like 400 is good. I 320 to 4, 320 or 480 yeah. sand, sand and paper is good. If you have rad pads, they work great. Dixie Bell used to sell rad pads, and we yeah. did too, but uh, they no longer do. So they don't carry them. So. It's, yeah. But anything, I mean, I just grabbed it because it's what's in there, and it was the closest to me, and I didn't have to go outside to look for it. Margie said if she had room, she would get it too. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. I love it too, but it does not match my decor. I have light gray walls, two shades, darker gray for the trim. My accent colors are purple. I like mm. gray. I, I like I like gray. I, you know, I what was it? I, I did some. What did I? I did something in, in Lucky Lavender. I can't even remember. I, it was a little bench, a little riser bench. It wasn't even a real bench. That is the thing about painting furniture. Like if you paint it to sell it, um, like for this piece, I have to be willing to to wait to wait for somebody who has this color scheme in their house. Um, but we're tired of painting everything white. So um, if you're if you're doing it for yourself, then yeah, there's tons of colors to match your um, color scheme, but you're doing it to sell then uh yeah this is just one of those pieces that i can put in the store and it might sell tomorrow or it might sell six months six from months now. from now i just have to be willing to uh sit on it but somebody will uh definitely it'll find a home for sure sandy said it fits her home colors exactly and margie said it Hers too. Then y'all better order some Weeping Willow because you'll love it. In person, you'll love it. It's so much prettier. And to chalk me. paint is a lot more forgiving than you go to Walmart and get some latex paint in the color that you want because latex don't come off easy. It don't sand. I, the only thing we use latex paint for is to paint the walls in the house. Because that's what it's for. It's not for painting furniture. Because we used to mix latex with a sodium bicarbonate. Yeah, when you had to make your to own make chalk our own paint. chalk paint. Back in the man, that was a long time ago. We were kids. <laughs> Spraying it through a spray gun. I remember that. Clogging up the nozzle. And you can spray chalk paint, guys. You got to yeah. thin it, and each one thins differently. I can't give you a magic one to one ratio or anything like that. One to one's way too thin, by the way. Okay, so that's your second coat. And then when that's dry, um, I would definitely go over it with um, the sanding pad again. I wonder if my rad pad will. I doubt it. It's too fine. It's going to sand the. It's gonna sand your paper smooth. <laughs> um, 
well, so is uh, that when that's too, is dry, that... you'll want to sand it with a 400 grit just to give it that buttery smooth. And again, if you're going to distress it, that would be your time to distress it before you seal it up. Or is that 240? Like that. Um, probably. Uh, 240 would be fine. That's a that's not even medium. 240 is in the fine scale. So 240 and above is fine sandpaper. So I'm just going to sand off the excess chalk paper, uh, decoupage paper, and I'm just going in a downward motion. May May made it says she loves that green. It's a Shannon green. It is a Shannon green, isn't it? But if May May likes it, it's a May May green. It's a May May green. It's definitely a Shannon green. I was thinking about that while I was painting it. I was like, I bet Shannon would like this green. coming out really good. Mm -hmm. So the reason why the two views have different, have the different looking colors is because the lighting is different. So if you view it from the front, it looks that color. If I view it from where I'm sitting, which is the side, it looks like it does on the the overhead camera. And plus some of it's wet because I just did a second coat. Now you're going to sand your second coat or are you just going to clear coat over it? Um, I'll sand this with the rad pad again, the fine sandpaper, right. just so that way it's, but it's really your, your smooth. Your paper is lifting. And, um, And then um, wipe it down, make sure there's no dust, and then that's where I would clear coat it after that. I like this sand in between coats and then the final sand. But if, for not distressing, I just go over it with a really fine, the fine sandpaper. Margie, that's because the, the it's lit from the front and not from, I don't have any light on the side. So that's why we're getting that different look between the two cameras. I just don't have enough lights is what it is. That's and plus is. the sunlight is coming in through, which is throwing off the overhead camera because okay. it's not, it's not as quality as the camera on the front. The overhead camera is not, it, it, it's not the same. There's a huge gap in the quality of the two cameras. All right, so I'm just going around and making sure. That it's nice and smooth. Try not to step on my other piece. Because it is rice paper, so it does have, it can have the fuzzes. And it looks like right here, I needed to add a little, I didn't get all the way to the edge, but I'm not going to worry about that because clear coat will um, glue that down really good when I go through to do that. So I'm going to wipe it off where I just sanded off that excess paper and then I'm going to use maybe I'll use this brush I'm going to grab another brush just in case this one is too thick I can't get the the camera's just not working right so what I'm going to do is go around my edge and do my detail work. Yeah, that's as good as I can get it on that. As far as trying to match the colors, that's, I, I can't get it any better. But it really looks like the one on the front camera. The top camera does a good, a good job of picking up the color of the decoupage paper. OK, 
because I can't fine tune the ISO on my overhead camera. All right, so I'm going to use this. I really want a, a tiny, tiny brush. Use that fan brush. I need it tinier to go in that. It's like it's like oh, table, then a little bit you. of layer, and then a little bit of layer. That's where the square brush would have been perfect. So I'm just going to use the detail brush to get into that. And the detail brush is just a watercolor brush that yeah. the end has been sni snipped on, so it'll make the bristles stiffer. Uh, a lot stiffer. But all I'm trying to do is, because I don't really want to paint my decoupage paper, but I just want to cover up that brown so that way it goes. Just detail work. The small stuff's always what gets. I don't. Have, I'm not patient enough for small stuff. That's where, like, I can paint the whole body, and then Missy would come back through and trim. Uh, it happened yesterday when I was sanding. I, I'm really rough in my sanding, so when I get something done, I call it good once all the shininess is gone. But I missed a few spots, so Missy went in with uh, really. F f I don't know. Uh, yeah. sandpaper wrapped around a dowel rod and yeah. was sanding in a little work. groove. And I was like, hmm, that's okay. I'm going to get a different sander one of these days. She wants one of those surf prep sanders. <laughs> that, that's expensive. not happening. That's not happening. Expensive. $700 for a sander. Yeah. Okay. My, my, my sander costed $38 at Walmart. Well, not the Dewalt one, but I got the Dewalt one in a kit when I so I bought this tool kit last Christmas, and it was a bunch of tools for one price. I think I got them all. It was on sale at Lowe's. No, I bought it on Amazon Lightning deal, wasn't it? So if you ever get a chance, Amazon does Lightning deals. And are you are you, you commercialing for Amazon? I guess so. You better stop. <laughs> I can't help it though. I got my my wood planer, seven hundred dollars at Lowe's. All right, I got my wood planer, and it was uh I got it lightning deal. It was one of those five minute flash lightning deals. They're only five minutes, and I got the notification because I had I had this planer sitting in my car watching it. I got the notification. I got that thing for one ninety nine ninety nine with an extra set of blades. The blades alone are like $79. So, amazed. And that's how I got my, my Dewalt toolkit. I think I paid 200 bucks for all that. And I got a, a I got everything except for the, uh, I didn't get a skill saw or, or the jigsaw or the sawzall. But I got a, a flashlight, an oscillating tool, a impact driver, a drill, like a real drill, not not their little stuff. Now you're just flexing. It was the XR. No, flexing would be. Oh, I'm gonna. I bought the. Went and bought the, <laughs> the circular saw. So sometimes you can find the circular saw with the Ooh, with the big on. battery, and it's the same price as just the saw, the tool alone. So if you can find it that way, get it that way with the battery. If you're looking for, if you're looking to get that stuff, always try to find it for. The, on the, a deal on a lightning cell or something because you can get a lot cheaper. All right, so I got to finish this part up. <laughs> May May said classic Rodney flex. Yeah, I told you, you're flexing. No, I'm not. I'm yeah, just, you're flexing. It's great deals and I find them and it's like, wow, you're you can't flexing. turn it down. Kathy understands. She loves tools. Tina, a Dremel tool would be awesome yeah. to, to do. Some. Unfortunately, my I can't find the charger for my Dremel. <laughs> Cause it's not a real Dremel and there's not, they don't make that kind anymore. You don't know where the charger is. So it's good until it's no it good. It was one of those, I think hyper tough from Walmart. It was like $7 and 99 cents. I bought the cheapest. I've always wanted to have a real Dremel, but you know, it is what it is. All right. So I'm going to let this dry up. Yeah. That looks fantastic. It's got its second coat. I'm just making sure where I painted around. Don't have no. 
gloves or anything. I wasn't flexing. I was just saying. It's oh, a good you deal. You get a good deal. You're flexing. Because if they're now, because for um, I only did one coat on this piece right here, there's a good chance that after that's dry, I might have to go through and do a second coat just around the top. But that's no big deal. It's just going around the top and making sure I did the second coat. And then um, this piece, too, we have to sand it. And um, what I'll do is I'll lift it and move it. And push this here and then this piece is going to be easy it's just going in a downward motion all the way around I'll switch all the overhead only so you can see what she's doing better this is always the most complicated part for me I go at too sharp of an angle Missy takes them at a very steep angle. Yeah, and you don't have to put much pressure. It usually one or two passes and the paper tears. And that's why I tear Dixie Bell or rice paper so much. Which we got some we got we got we got quite a few projects that are gonna involve a lot of, of decoupage paper coming up with some new techniques too. We have a really cool idea, and uh, I got a box that we're I'm gonna, gonna show. Do. We're gonna we're gonna show May May as soon as it's done because um, it's gonna be awesome. Okay, so this piece sits inside of that, and then the screws will go back in, so it'll sit like that. Um, I'm not gonna put it in yet because number one, um, I don't want to. I want my paint to finish drying and get hard so that um, I can slide this in here. But this will probably be easier just to seal up like this. And um, that way it's all protected and good. And then we'll be able to put it in there, flip the table over and add the screws, no problem. So I'm not gonna do that yet. I could go ahead and paint this, but I think I'm just going to put it in and then take my paint and cover up the wood part uh, once that it's in and set so that way I'm not accidentally getting paint on my rice paper um, because it is a round surface and this would probably be easier to paint on the counter versus really down here. Um, so that way I could set it up and then go around and paint it. But it'll probably, it's easy, it's gonna be easiest to paint when the, this gets put back in. So all that's left on this table would be to um, let it dry all the way and then give it one more good sanding with the 400 grit sandpaper. And then after that, dust it down, make sure it's clean and um, from anything, and then seal up the entire table with a clear coat. I'm gonna use flat. Um, I will do two coats of flat on the top here and a coat of, you know, here, and then just cover the entire table, uh, the chalk paint and flat. And so that way my table is sealed up and protected and then it's ready to go. And then pop my new knob on the drawer. Isn't it a cool knob? So that... Kaylee helped, no, Emily helped us pick it out, didn't she? Yeah. That's my table. And this is still drying and that's fine. Tilt it forward if you can on that main camera. Um, tilt it this way? Towards that main camera, yeah. That way they can see the top. My drawer will come better. out. I might not be able to. That's the top. Yeah, you can see the strong lights. It's 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 beating it down. There we go. That's my top. Yeah, it looks fantastic. And then, of course, this is dry and wet. But that's that. Yeah, I think it looks great. So if you decoupage the top of it and then it, after it's done and it, you know, it's dry or whatever, if you see like a crease or a wrinkle before you seal it up with a clear coat, that would be the opportunity to take some wax paper or parchment paper and an iron and just go over it um, because it is paper and it, 
you know, it can bubble. It can bubble and it can wrinkle. Um, but I mean, it's not going to be a hundred percent perfect. And you, is some of it could be the texture from the paper itself, from the rice stuff. Is that yeah? Isn't that what that's called? But um, mulberry. Mulberry, yeah. You could uh, lay a piece of parchment paper on there and use an iron and just go over it once your Mod Podge is all the way dry, and that would just help with that if there is any. But my advice is to just walk away from it, let it dry, let it get cure all the way, um, and then and then come back because you don't want to overwork it. Because if I keep on touching it and mashing it and moving it, it's going to eventually tear, and then it's going to make me mad. So yeah, that's what I would do. Just walk and it away. Does. It let makes it her mad. It does. And she'll sand the whole thing back down. Yep. Because I can't like it. But yeah, so all that dry, and then go over it again with some. That's what we need. We need a shirt that says, "Missy, I can't like it." I can't like it. She says that a lot. I can't like it. I can't like it. And then you have your scrap pieces of paper that you can use on something else in the room and tie it up. You could, this uh, decoupage paper would look good if you painted the whole table in drop cloth and then put that on there. And then that would be your, you know, statement part is the top of it. So if you didn't like the green or the green didn't work for you, but you could do this paper, um, you could paint the whole table in drop cloth and put that paper on the top. It would look good with drop cloth. It mm -hmm. would look good with and if you didn't sandbar. Want it, if you didn't want it on the top, but you just wanted, you know, still wanted this paper, you could have easily just um, take, taken the drawer out is what she and then just done it on the drawer and put a, a basic knob on there. And then that would have been, you know, like there's, there's, I could have went, uh, or I think I could have went a couple of different ways Yeah. with it. It didn't have to be like this. And then if you didn't, if that, if this is too much, then you didn't have to do this. You could have just painted this the green color. And then I like think it, it but I like that really too. Well, I think it'll be, I think it'll look good. I like kind of give it some height with it being one up top and one on the bottom. Just make it look. Kathy like said that. the knob was really pretty. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Sandy said, but the green is outstanding. Yeah, I think I love it is the green. too. And Missy's a big fan of green right now. Even if um, there was no paper on top of it, even if it was the whole entire table, this green would have looked pretty. Would have yeah. looked pretty with like a glass knob. That would have been pretty. That's right up my alley. When we get it all done, I'll uh, take some yeah. photos and we'll post. We'll post them in the. Uh, we'll post them on the. Uh, what is it called? A community channel, I think. Whatever. It's whatever Facebook, uh, YouTube calls it. We'll yeah. post it right there. But yeah, okay. So to finish it up, it's lightly sand it, seal it all up, and you're good to go. Thank y'all for watching, guys. Yep, Thank y'all for it. sticking around with us for so long. Yep. We hope that. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up. That would be awesome. Yeah. I always forget to say that. I have a lot of furniture, so I'm going to do smalls too, but I got to work through this furniture. Um, Alabama gets cold, especially in January. January, February. Yeah. That's when we get really cold and it's really hard. So we have to, to get our furniture done before it right. gets too cold. It's really hard to work outside with it. So. And we don't want it to be hot, but we don't want it to be too cold yeah. either. So, Sandy says she loved it. Tina said beautiful. Thank Marge you. said thank, thank you. you for sharing this. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Kathy thank said you. always enjoy watching. Thank y'all. The reason why I tell her all this, she can't see any of it. <laughs> thank y'all. Because I'm way over here. She's way over there. Yeah, I appreciate y'all for sure. And I guess we'll see you guys next week. Yep, next Friday. Next Friday. We have something really cool. Yep. Bye, Bye guys. Bye, y'all.